Hey guys, we're in Phoenix, Arizona today at Ramjet. We're here with Hans. Um, we'll be talking his FXR. So uh, I guess let's get started before kind of we jump into your bike and all. Kind of give us a little bit of your history, a little bit of your backstory, that kind of deal. All right. Um, so I came here to the U.S. born in South America in Chile. And um, from there moved to Germany when I was seven years old. So uh, my background growing up Spanish and German and then ending up here in Salt Lake um, when I was 14 years old. Um, shortly after that, started getting into skiing, ski okay. racing, um, which brought me up into Park City, Utah, as a, you know, for those people that don't know, pretty big little ski town now. And um, as time went on, Got to know some of the locals as I grew older that were a little bit older than I am and were ski instructors and we struck up these friendships. And uh, at the time in the summer, I was more into the dirt bike scene, doing a lot of that, to keep busy and doing mm -hmm. some cool stuff. And uh, anyway, um, a lot of, like I said, some of my friends at the time, um, ski instructing and then going into summertime would get on their bikes and go on road trips and I was like I need to get me well, yeah, yeah. you know get a Harley yeah, you yeah. know and at the time if for one it was really hard to order a bike mm -hmm. or even you couldn't just walk into the dealership and get a bike so you had to order and if you weren't the right guy you were pretty much on the back burner so I ended up going to Wyoming, um, Green River, um, Harley Davidson, and got the first bike. And then from there on, got into riding with the buddies, and we were going on the longer yeah. road trips yeah. and and um, just having a good old time, you know. And that to to most of us was just the getting out and having a destination, camping out for a couple of days, or moving on. And just laughing and having a good yeah, old time in yeah. in those days. And we're talking, you know, mid nineties to to late nineties. There was a lot of that kind of riding going on. You know, over the over the years, <clears throat> all our I wouldn't say long rides uh, by any means, like some people get out and do. But um, you know, being able to get out two or three times a year and going on a overnight trips with the buddies, you know, mm -hmm. and just yeah, yucking it up and having a good old time. Um, and, and that's that was part of Julio's big thing was just hoping that people would keep doing that, you mm -hmm. know, or get out and ride, not just um, bar hopping, even though that's cool too. It's whatever you, you're doing, but that special thing about getting out on the road mm -hmm. with your buddies and experiencing some different things that are just, you know, you can't, you can't yeah. plan, right? Yep. It just happens, you know, somebody breaks down and that leads to whatever, you know, yep. those are the memories that will hold forever. So with this build, I, I'm, I'm hoping that um, it does inspire people just to get out and ride. It's not just a show piece. Um, I do ride it and um, I'm planning on putting a bunch of miles on it. You know, that's, that's my thing. I do have a road glide that I ride too, that I can pack a lot of things for camping and whatnot. But um, when the time comes, I do, I mean, I've ridden this thing up to Boise to yeah. a show and enjoyed the hell out of it. You know, people say, oh, they're not super comfortable, but hey, I had a blast. I was smiling from ear to ear. I mean, so. yeah, I mean, in the day, I think, I mean, riding your bike is what it's about. And I think the long trips are what I prefer to do. And like, you create, like, like you said, unique experiences that so you're not going to get any other way. Right. Um, and some great memories so yeah yeah and some of the experiences you know just random people just walking up to you yeah. and just start a conversation you know it even doesn't have to be it happened on, on my other bikes too where old guy would walk up and go yeah back when i was young i used to <laughs> rip around all over back you yeah. know and he's talking back 30s and 40s you yeah. know and it's just it's a hoot to get into those conversations out in the middle of nowhere montana wyoming or yeah. whatever you know and just uh, some of the country that we have to ride, it's just, uh, it's breathtaking, you yeah, know, I'd and agree. it changes daily, yeah, depending on the sun or the <laughs> yeah. light, you know, it just, uh, it brings some well, cool shit. Yeah, you're in Colorado, and I haven't done a ton of riding in Colorado, I've done a little bit, and I've done plenty of, like, travel in the truck there, and Colorado's got some pretty amazing riding, but then, like, 
Wyoming and Montana, it's just, the routing up there is just next level. It's just wide stuff. open. It's yeah. like being a, a, a cowboy back in the old days, you yeah. know, with no fences, yeah. but you're just doing a little bit quicker, yeah. a lot yeah. quicker. <laughs> a, lot bit, a lot of it quicker. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the bighorns and Beartooth Pass, and, yeah. you know, so fortunate to keep riding those those kind of roads yeah. yearly and it's uh everybody should get out there and experience that because it's yeah it's, it's nothing like it that's definitely some of my area favorite areas i've ridden in i've even been back and unintentionally wound up doing the same areas twice and it's still amazing i do want to get back i've done more wyoming than montana i do want to get up there and do do a lot more montana i'm lacking on I guess my coverage of Montana. And whatnot, yeah, there's so. just, it's endless in Idaho too. You know, not too many people talk about Idaho, but yeah, I mean, there's a road along the salmon coming out of Sun Valley going up towards Missoula and then road from Missoula going down towards Boise along the Locksaw. Uh -huh. And it's just, and I think Jason, the boys did that this yeah, last I think so, yeah. summer. And, you know, that's in their memory bank now too. And that's just a, yeah, freaking think, unbelievable even in the rain yeah i mean uh, they had it in the rain and i think cody mentioned his interview i guess that it rained on him like the whole one of the days they were there and he was saying it was still one of his favorite places he's ridden yep, to, even yep. with the rain it was pretty amazing so. it, it becomes magical you know even if it's raining very cool and and uh yeah so hopefully some bits and pieces or reasons that people build whatever you know that the inspiration hopefully that yeah. Keeps going, keep going. So was your what was your what was your first bike? What was the bike you got kind of started? Like, um, the on? first bike, um, actually, a friend of mine had a little sports stair, and that was the first road bike that I kind of got a little bit used to. Yeah. You know, it wasn't my bike, but he let me ride it, which was pretty cool back then. Um, just passed uh, a couple of years after high school, and then my first bike that I bought was a, a soft tail, and uh, the wife rides it now. So okay, nice. that was. An old Evo, and the the bike still looks super cool and runs like a charm. And it's great. been up to Canada many a times, so oh, nice. that's pretty cool. You guys do so, trips together now, then? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so awesome. she rides, and a um, little history on my wife's side. Her grandfather, um, he held the record. It's I think it's called the Red Flag, mm -hmm. which was border to border from Canada to Mexico, and this is 1920. Um, so they're mostly on dirt roads and if i believe correct the time was like 36 hours okay from border to border and they On dirt and had to check in at post office get the stamp so that they had the times right you uh -huh. know so that was pretty cool so the history here she is you know still riding in the family tradition which is pretty cool yeah that's definitely awesome cool and so we're actually <clears throat> here in ramjet so um and obviously they helps you build this bike um you're, you're in colorado now, right right and so we're, southwest colorado we're in phoenix so how kind of how did that kind of that relationship start yeah that's kind of a um a good story there um julio my my friend that's the inspiration of building this bike in his honor um he had moved to tucson and we were doing our summer trips we would do two three trips a year and um one trip after going to Sturgis and doing our Montana trip, he goes, we need to do another trip this, this fall. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks later, he called me and said, hey, there's a really cool um, little rally, Cottonwood, Thunder Valley okay. rally, and let's meet there. So I rode down, he came up, and uh, we met there at Cottonwood, and on, I can't remember, um, Saturday, one of the main days, we're walking down Main Street, and at the time, the, the rally was on Main Street itself, which is super cool, you know, lots of people, and we get down to the bottom of Main Street and hang a right, and there were some booths set up, and um, we got sidetracked over to another booth, and I turned around, and I see this um, yellow-orange FXR with an RT fairing, and I said, hey, Julio, there, look, check out that FXR, and... So we turned around and sure enough, you know, he just instantly went for the RT fairing because that's what, what he wanted to do on his FXR that he's had since 87. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're sitting there gawking at it and looking and here comes Tony and uh, introduced himself. And, you know, within minutes, Julio and Tony were like 
meshing and they were just having a good old time. And that started that friendship to where Julio brought his FXR up to get the RT fairing put on. <clears throat> and um, after he got that all put together and color matched and uh, he goes, I, I really would like to take it to the um, FXR show up in Sturgis mm -hmm. and just show it off and be part of that whole yeah, yeah. scene. And um, anyway, um, a year later, he sadly passed away, and that dream got squished. And uh, that's kind of where we, Tony and I, started with this build, and um, that's what kicked to, this one to, off to finish that dream, okay. more or less, right? And y'all, so, I guess jumping ahead, but y'all did that this past year, correct? It, um, twenty. Oh, twenty. Okay. Yep. So two years ago. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Um, cool. So this is... We're 21. 21? Yeah. Okay. This is an 89, you said, right? So this is an 89. Um, <clears throat> after um, Julio had passed, um, my first thought was, can we do something with his bike? And, you know, then some of those emotions um, kind of nixed that idea right away. And um, I told Tony, I said, if you can find a used FXR that we can just gut and just use a frame and, mm -hmm. and start over. Um, maybe use some of the pieces off of Julio's bike to keep that whole idea and, and thought going um, and then take it to the show. And and uh, so anyway, that started that project and that was in 19, end of 18, I guess, okay. when we kind of started putting some ideas together. And um, Tony did find this 89 that we, um, that I came down and bought from F FXR division. Okay. From Chris and Chris was just super, I mean, what a guy. I just, all I can say was uh, um, great experience. Anyway, that started this, this uh, project. We just basically stripped it down and did you kind of, I guess, kind of when you started, obviously you're building a bike to kind of like finish this dream. Did you have an idea of kind of what you wanted with the bike right off the bat or kind of how did that work in terms of like the direction for the build? You know, obviously the, the RT fairing because that's where he finished mm -hmm. off. So I wanted to make sure that we kept that idea going. Um, he did like, I mean, he had clamshells on his, but he wasn't super happy with the way Sometimes the latches worked. I know that he got that worked out, but he also liked the the um, RP bags that, that uh, we ended up going with that mm -hmm. idea, which I I, I really like. Um, and then y'all got a load of load of performance parts on here. So yeah, I mean we can get into that, and I'll let Tony um, talk a little bit more about um, some of the cool things that we did. Um, Originally, I, I was thinking about doing a different inverted setup, and Tony came up with the idea with Reba Feeney, which mm -hmm. I'm really glad we did. Um, handles super good. I mean, the thing is so much fun in the mountains where I get to ride yeah. southwest you've been, Colorado. And, you've been <clears> seeing a lot more of their stuff lately. Um, not, a, not a ton of it. I guess a few of the bigger bills you've been seeing their stuff. Right. More. I and think, I, uh, Big Trouble, CBO. Yeah, that thing is Rufini. freaking gorgeous. Um, I think a few, a few other things. I've heard nothing but amazing things about them. So, yeah. Um, we, um, one of the other things that, you know, I wanted some key things off of his bike that um, maybe would make me feel like his dream was going forward mm -hmm. to Sturgis to that show. One was the exhaust. Mm -hmm. um, he had a Thunderheader on his, but obviously that was gonna work with the twin cam. And um, so Ross came to me and said, hey, let me build a, a um, exhaust for you. And I was like, really kind of bummed out because I wanted a Thunderheader, yeah, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. kind of the deal. And uh, so anyway, it was a surprise. And <clears throat> he uh, took three Thunderheaders, cut them up, including Julio's, which is uh, now the guts of this exhaust is okay. the Thunder Header that was on his bike. Okay. So in essence, the the bike is still living forward um, with that exhaust. And then the dash um, was off of his bike. And Tony came up with the idea with the inserts on the dash, which... Okay, so y'all were able to bring some pieces in to really... Yeah, like, so um, um, that was an emotional day um taking it to the show in Sturgis and kind of finishing that dream that he had yeah you yeah. know and I was just so overwhelmed with emotions and the whole thing but it was such a cool 
experience to be there with all those great people. Yeah, which met some bikes, wonderful yeah. people. It was awesome. Um, I wish I would add a little bit more time. I think going forward, we'll get to talk, you yeah, know, yeah. again, I'm sure. Um, you won some, some stuff while you were, you won some stuff while you were there as well, right? We did. We, Jace, um, Fast Life Garage, mm -hmm. he picked the bike and, um, ooh, we'll have to ask Tony, um, another painter picked it also. But, you know, that started a whole nother chapter and, and meeting some great guys, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that whole Fast Life Garage and, you know, Agreed. following those guys and, and uh, getting the respect from from that got a killer helmet from jace um wear that with a passion so yeah. well you mentioned i guess two painters i guess when giving you awards actually like uh walk us through your paint because you've got a really nice color here it's really nice i don't know classic looking paint job but you got some really nice touches throughout so kind of like walk us through like your whole paint so the paint um <clears throat> originally i was thinking you know some some different solid colors kind of what we did here not so much paneling which is tradition in the, in the fsr and that was part of julio's um towards the end when we were just talking and he was sending me pictures and go oh, check out this bike you know how cool is this bike and mm -hmm. um and one of them was just the the solid colors so being a little bit out of the box i started looking at some um bronzy colors okay. and just happened on this bmw color and in the picture it just looked super cool mm -hmm. um so we ended up going with that um decided to go with a little bit of ghost paneling with a pinstriping mm -hmm. which um hopefully pops here um and then the um airbrush art that that's uh there's a meaning behind that but that's kind of a julio okay, thing yeah, you know right, he yeah. he was single and and uh he liked the girls in Nevada. <laughs> I got you. So the wife thought that would be a, a kind of a cool idea to put some angel girls on the tank, okay. you know, being a little bit different yeah. instead of riding Harley Davidson or something else on there. And that's uh, some, really, some pretty awesome like airbrushing there too as well, it right? It is. And you know, the big thanks goes out to Charles Armstrong, the painter, um, out of art by the kid and a uh, phenomenal airbrush artist. And uh, it was really fun watching him in the process um and the amount of work that goes into painting i had no idea i thought mm -hmm. okay we'll spray this thing in three weeks we're yeah, done right we're done. exception to the <laughs> airbrush stuff but as we got into it and he let me come over and watch and and see how much work i mean just the sanding on the on the fairing itself to get it just perfect um it was amazing and uh he had me come back and help him with the the buffing, um, I would hold the parts so he could buff it out okay. after wet sanding, which, That's pretty cool. you, you know, I was like, why do, I don't get it, you know, yeah, we're going to yeah. sand it, it <laughs> looks perfect to me, and he goes, no, 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 so. That's pretty cool, yeah, you got to actually participate in your, on the paint, on the bike, kind of Right, deal. right, um, and another, you know, in the process, uh, another good friend, and as it happened, he lived close um, to where I am in Montrose, Colorado, and so it was easy for me to stop in almost on a daily and see where he was yeah. with the project. Okay, that's you know, awesome. We were at the time, uh, you know, kind of crunch. We got to get it done before Sturgis, you yeah, know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So you got there and then y'all are bringing it in with a nice, a lot of nice red touches. Obviously your calipers, your little foot peg. Yeah, that uh, was kind of my idea to, to bring a little bit of red to it. Not mm -hmm. a, not a ton, but just a little bit to make it pop. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also got a little like another little com commemorative piece on uh on your dash right right and that um a good friend of mine um his son is a tattoo artist and uh he came up with that idea um julio was also into hot rods and and so the the ray bands and um that slick back hair that's that was his look so okay. kind of a cool little yeah, yeah, I like it. It's a, it's a, it's a very nice touch. Cool, man. So, uh, I guess we'll so we would talk about some parts and, yeah. and go from there. Yep. You know what we ought to do is um, bring Tony into this because he was behind the build and, like and he knows what is on here. So, if somebody's wanting to, yeah, get some ideas, they can call Tony or the guys here at Ramjet, and uh, 
Let's cool. bring them out. Yeah, let's do it. All right. I guess before we jump into the parts and everything, like introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Ramjet, that whole deal. I'm Tony from Ramjet. Here with Ben at Get Bent Moto and Hans talking about an uh, FXR, twin cam FXR we built for him, what, two years ago now? Yeah. Two years ago, yeah. Uh, long time project, takes about a year, but uh, this is the bike and here to answer any questions you need, man. Cool, yeah, I'd love to kind of run through some of the parts with you because y'all got a, a lot of pretty amazing stuff on here. Um, I like to kick it off. I know you sort of see a little bit of like the rear feeding mm -hmm. around and like the kind of whole Harley performance scene. I feel like you don't still don't see a ton of it. So I'd like you to kind of walk us through. I know you got a whole Rebuffini. Rebuffini. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Rebuffini. Re it's an Italian company. Make great stuff. We sell a lot of their stuff and install a lot of it. Kind of start from the front here. We got uh, wheels from Lindell and brakes, uh, Rebuffini calipers, Rebuffini Nexo front end, um, did a RWD RT fairing. Alloy art lights and uh, you got a speed merchant skid plate with more alloy art lights down there with it. Um, on the, I guess, slowing down just a tad, on, I guess the Rebuffini, like, is that an entire front end kit you get from them? It the is, correct. And everything? Yeah, it's their whole Nexo front end. I think this is the 4.0. Now they're off to a 5.0 for touring applications, but it's the whole front end with trees and everything. They're pretty slick stuff. They've got okay. like um, internal uh, the, break trees inside of the triple tree and stuff, so they're really clean. Yeah, I was, we were actually talking about that a second ago with the triple trees, your brake lines, they would actually run all the way through. And I guess the hole in the bottom tree where you've got like the brake line through, is that actually, did that actually come that way? Do you have to machine that out? Uh, no, it comes that way. Okay. They, I mean, they're really top quality stuff. We use it a lot. So yeah, that whole uh, brake splitter actually sits up into the tree flush and it can be removed, but that way all you see are the fittings exposed and no other ugly block or anything like that. Okay. And then the internal, I guess their internals are Mupo, is that how you say that? Mupo, you say? yeah, Mupo? it's another good Italian suspension company that okay. actually makes their cartridge internals and stuff. Okay. Um, I see this one, you obviously got adjustments on the top, but you also have adjustments down there as well, which yep. is something I see a ton of. So. Yeah, they've got full full adjustable forks. You've got compression, rebound, preload, everything you need. Okay. And then y'all ran, I guess, the rear as well, correct? We ran Olin's in the back. Um, okay, on the sock. Okay. Yeah, and at, the, at the time... I don't know if Mupo had rear shocks yet available. Um, and Olean's is a fantastic company. Yeah. We use constantly, you know what I mean? It's our favorite suspension, probably. Uh, and we ran those in the rear, a black line in the back to match. Okay. And then I guess, I'm sorry, you, you, jumped in the, you jumped into the fairing and all. Kind of walk us, walk us through that like you'd start because I know y'all had to make mounts for that and everything. Yeah, right. it's RWD fairing shell. Uh, I forgot who the lowers were. I can't recall, to be honest with you. Um, but we made our own brackets and stuff. Uh, and you know, did some body work to make it fit really clean, get the lines really good. Clockworks windshield, of course, is yep. the best windshield you can get. Um, walk us through, I guess, walk us through the actual, like, all your ergonomic setup with your bars and your risers and that whole setup. Walk us through all that. Um, that was pretty much tailored to, you know, Hans and his riding position with quality parts. Again, stuff we tried to use quite a bit, uh, different brands, but get the rider set up good so mm -hmm. they're comfortable, you know, um, getting a good riding position that... Uh, that kind of triangle for the rider to sit yep. there is very important. So when you're turning and cycling, you're not going to lean way forward and all that, you know? Mm -hmm. So we use Krauss pullback risers, a fly moto bar. Um, again, with uh, hand controls and stuff from Reba Feeney, those are really nice. Those radial hand controls. We got uh, uh, moto gadget uh, mirrors. I like those a lot. They're, yeah, that's they're, something you're starting to see, I guess, a little bit more of too, like the Reba Feenies. And I actually, I think I want to switch to those on mine here soon. That's the hand nice. controls, the radials? Uh, the the Moto Gadget mirrors. Sorry. Oh yeah, those are really nice, man. They're glassless mirrors, which are pretty trick, so they're lightweight, they don't vibrate as much. Yeah. There's no glass in it, they use some crazy okay. laser polishing uh, uh, process to make the billet aluminum actually a mirror, which is pretty okay. trick. Cool. And then I guess walk us through like the, the whole gauge setup, the housing and everything for that. The gauges are decoded digital. Um, housing we made here, it looks pretty minimalistic, which kind of what we want to do, not take away from the rest of it. But yeah. uh, uh, Ross, uh, who's the fabricator, did all that. Pretty cool. We actually started with like four inch steel plumbing tubing and then, you know, uh, cut them, bored them the right size. And then we machined all the parts and molded it and everything. And uh, yeah, built those from scratch. Okay. So I know what you, you noticed. I know you mentioned Dakota Digital. When I was out there doing like the photos and videos earlier, I noticed the actual LEDs are red. Um, when I feel like they're typically like blue or another color of Dakota Digital. They offer them oh. in red or blue. Um, okay. They no longer make that series, but that was uh, out of a, a kit you'd get for a touring application. Okay, so you could get red. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Cool, man. Um, I guess let's let's jump to the rear and then we'll come back to the motor. Uh, obviously running track swing arm and kind of walk us through everything back there. Track swing arm, um, we got conventional FXR uh, rear fender. 
we use FXR Division bags. Uh, their P system, it's really nice. You know, they're made right here in Arizona, and they're mm -hmm. good friends of ours too. So we want to support them and run their stuff, and it really fits with the kind of yeah. direction you're going on the bike. But then we modified the rails to bring them in. I think about an inch, okay. um, as much as we could on each side to get as narrow as possible, so we could really keep the width of the the lowers and the rails all one. So okay. it didn't have a kind of a big fat back end. You know yeah. what I mean? It makes it really tidy and clean. Yeah. yeah. So cool. I think we did. Uh, I think we did um, their billet struts as well. Yeah. Okay. Just our, our low profile integrated tail light and okay. keep it clean and simple back there. Okay. Um, and then track swing arm, you did a you did a Kraus hanger for the Rebuffini Kraus Kraus mount, yeah. Rebuffini brake. Um, we go back and forth between Rebuffini and Kraus on those. We like them both, just whichever just one we want to pick at that time. Sure you know the application. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then I guess you're running a chain kit with a motor as well. You remember? You should, yeah, we do chains a lot. I mean, pretty much, you know, when you're doing bigger inch motors and stuff chains are a nice way to go they look cooler too um a little narrower sometimes you can make a mess with the oil but it's pretty much the way to go on most i things, mean you know? a little more cleaning but nothing like nothing too serious sure all right so uh jump in the motor because i know y'all y'all converted from evo to the twin cam right yeah we did go to twin cam so we used our twin cam conversion kit to modify the frame um to accept a touring training with the oil pan okay uh, cleans it up a lot gets rid of the oil bag up there and then you have a lot cleaner lines without having external oil lines or on this it has external because it's an earlier one but they're mm -hmm. shorter they're not hanging in the front you know and having the oil pump exposed and stuff like that so we put a sns 111 twin cam in it six speed tranny the oil uh, uh tranny i'm sorry a bagger transmission case with the pan you know okay a bagger primary we modified to put a mid shift through it and everything like that so okay. we modify the primary by cutting the heel toe lug off and then uh, welding in a tube through it and then put some, you know, bronze bushings in it to support the shaft and everything. Okay. Um, and then that way it's a mid shift set up and then we use Dyna foot control mounts, all that stuff, uh, as far as the frame goes, the mounts included in our twin cam kit. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's on there. And then we put a plate where the oil bag used to be um, to cover that up and it helps us hide a lot of electronics and stuff. Mm -hmm. So in there we actually created like a, uh, like an electrical service panel where we mounted the moto gadget um m unit two and some okay. other components uh that we with a little bit of extra wire so you can remove it and set it on the top of the frame and access anything you need to okay. do any service work or diag and then um that's all run internally to the backbone and drops down for uh you know the compression releases and things like that okay awesome and then i guess uh i guess for internals for the motor like cam and everything does that did y'all just stick whatever I guess whatever we actually used the crate 111 okay. i mean they, they really come with some nice stuff we, so we fine-tune them sometimes but honestly for the price everything we do when we do a lot of motor builds we're using sns internals for the majority of the stuff uh, the quality of the parts are there and these 585 cams they work fantastic for okay. the type of riding hans does you know from like three grand and up they just work killer and he's usually riding this going on the highway and everything so nice there's no need to pull it apart yet at this point yeah, right uh, you know, uh, wait till we need the service yeah. and then maybe we'll go a little faster a little bigger cool that makes sense um all right obviously he's running lucky dave's fxr seat yep um cool man i think we ran through most of it you got a bunch of a couple more little ramjet pieces i guess uh, on the dash oh yeah on the dash there. here we uh we made these custom panel inserts to match the Rebuffini pockets and stuff like that to uh -huh. give it some texture because the bikes look pretty trick, but there's just, there was a, I don't know, so I needed something, an eye grabber in the center there, you know? And then obviously it was really important for us, uh, something we wanted to surprise Hans with and we put um, information uh, for his best friend that passed away, which is the whole reason we put this thing together and how we met and everything, mm -hmm. which is a pretty cool story. I think you guys already went over it. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, a little bit, right? And uh, yeah, so that was really important for us to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, that was the first one we did like that. We recently released like a, uh, I had a couple extra when we did that to see how everything went, you know, so we did like a, a limited run of those things we just dropped the other day. But uh, that's one of one, the first one, number one of the 10 that we did. Okay. Um, then we anodize it's red to match the components and stuff. So it all brings it back together. Yeah, it ties together a little bit, you know. Yeah, he mentioned the, I guess, piece of the piece 300 headers together for an exhaust. And yeah, we actually took, um, you know, the, the Thunder header that was off Julio's bike, his friend that passed away that, uh, again, how we all met. And we chopped, we, we wanted to retain the muffler body of it, you mm -hmm. know, um, for the significance and not necessarily for... Um, you know the peak performance pipe or yeah, whatever yeah. trying to get too fancy with it It was the idea to retain that and a few other components off of that motorcycle to build this one mm -hmm. um i believe we did that with the pipe the dash right 
um, and a handful of other pieces, but we kept the pipe and uh, used as many pieces as we could. And then just used some other, we bent up some materials, some other scraps and um, made that pipe. So that way it was a kind of a living and breathing through him. You know what I mean? That was yeah. the idea behind it. Does that include, I guess you all had to make the brackets and everything for that? Yeah, well? and everything. I mean, we pretty much used this, that was the signet, that was the mm -hmm. portion of his pipe from the collector back, everything else and stuff we did here with the heat shields and everything. Okay, cool. Um, and you mentioned earlier, I guess the fender, you ought to make some custom out for that too, right? Yeah, I want to use a, a, a strong fender from Japan. Um, we got one of those in uh, for that cafe style look, you know, mm -hmm. they used to do from Harley. And uh, then we made some brackets for it because I'm not really a fan of the typical fenders that come with inverter front end kits, yeah. even though they're yeah. nice quality and stuff, they just don't really flow with the t tradition of this you know we kind of want to make a modern performance right so it's quality it works reliable with better parts but mm -hmm. still keep that kind of classic fxr look. classic yeah. look right yeah. not going too far from it and then also a lot of times they are intended to work with like 17 inch wheels because they're already something that was in existence and mm -hmm. they just don't really fit the radius of the tire well and all that so yeah. um we want to use the conventional 19 inch one and then we just made some custom brackets for it to fit on there okay yeah it's gonna you mentioned linda wheels so 19 is this a uh, 19 18 18, 18? Yeah. yep cool mm -hmm. All right, man. Uh, actually, clutch, do y'all? Oh, clutch. yeah. Uh, clutch, drive size. We use all Evolution Industry stuff in there. Their chain, their comp eliminator, and their clutch. Great stuff. I love it. And then obviously, the colorways fit with this bike killer. We use the Trask uh, clear derby cover so you could see through it and see the red pressure plate on the clutch, and it just ties together. So, you know, real well, you had to do that. Yeah. Awesome, man. You got uh, Electron, too? Electron yeah. carb for Hans. That uh, seemed the best because, you know, we wanted to keep it carbureted um for how much he rides and service needs things like that uh and and you know serviceability and all that but the thing is where he does ride on a daily ride he's got huge elevation changes yeah, yeah. up in you know up in colorado where he's at so he might go in a day just for a couple hours but he's talking thousands of feet of elevation changes and we dialed in a macuni or an sns to be too specific so that was the best thing we could do to combat that you know um and it seems to be working pretty well right i mean you go out all over the place we, we meet in different states all over the place and the bike's always running great so i'm happy yeah. we went that route cool man and uh i guess we got some boosted brad pegs along yes in there. uh boosted brads his uh, uh bear trap pegs one of my personal favorites i run those on all pretty much all my bikes um, myself and then um yeah we use hammerhead designs controls uh i like those a lot they have a good look to them and i used to run those on all my dirt bikes and stuff back yeah. in the day so Super um nice. that's pretty much the most of it PM yeah. transmission end cover and stuff and uh i think that's about it man awesome man cool well i appreciate it thanks for letting us use your space yeah and i'm happy you guys came by parking lot and everything today um if you're in phoenix area or anywhere um make sure you check these guys out yeah come by check us out we've got a thirteen thousand square foot shop here we've got pretty much everything to build a bike from the ground up from old knuckle pan shovel stuff evo twin cam m8 everything in between you know all cool and got a full service department too and an online store. So whatever you guys need, we can take care of it. Awesome. I'll drop all the links below and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So thank you. Man. It, I appreciate your time. Yeah, for sure. All right, man, you were, you were mentioned earlier, you had a pretty cool story about kind of how y'all, how this bike got de debuted or whatever. Kind of what runs through Yeah. That. So, um, Tony came up with a great idea, you know, cause the FXR community is so tight, you know, there, there's a lot of them, but it, it's, it's a, cool community let's put it that way so he came up with the idea to um go out to uh topaz lodge um and go out there for the fxr jam okay um nick henzo mm -hmm. henzo yeah. um puts that on just outrageous uh event and just did such a good job um with that and i was just blown away with how many people how many bikes I want to say 200 plus bikes uh, and every bike as cool as the next. I mean, awesome and awesome people. I mm -hmm. mean, I met some great people there, um, had a great time revealing and also some of my buddies from uh, Utah. Now that some live in Florida, uh, Big Jim and Reno, but we all got together, came out and um, I drug my trailer out so I could bring the bike back home and and uh, okay, was this your first time seeing the bike as well? That was the okay. first time okay. seeing the bike totally put together. Obviously, I've, I came down here um, a few times in between, but never saw the finished the product. Complete. You know, okay, it was yeah. just either the 
we just got done putting the engine in or the motor and and or this and that but uh, after getting it all painted i never saw the finished project until then so that was really super special and and being able to share that with the fxr community and some of the great people out there josh who has the nessie mm -hmm. um, fxr awesome dude um vic from boise um great story from vic you know if anybody wants to watch that um podcast with jason vic um where he talks about his uh, involvement in the movie with um sons of anarchy and, okay you know awesome guy so i i could go on and on about different people yeah, and, yeah. and you know that's how you it uh but anyway awesome um cool man awesome weekend yeah all right well thanks for or having me out or coming down to meet me kind of deal i know it kind of worked out that you were coming down here um there's more stuff with these guys on this bike and everything but uh thanks for having me out you got any big future plans for this i know it looks as far as i'm concerned it looks great right now but yeah else? ride no, the shit out of it just ride, it. It. Yeah. Just ride yeah. it you know we might um there's a new riser that tony's involved with um with some um more dampening so we might do that um me getting old <laughs> yeah my my wrist is kind of after a while the vibration my my wrist is yeah. kind of moving on me a little bit so when you're uh doing all those long trips like you're talking about every little bit of comfort like it adds up over the course of like a long day and especially if you had a couple back to back to back so it, yeah. it, it does you know and then i've heard stories from people oh god the fxr they're not comfortable to ride and blah 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 and so that was a little not hesitant, but um, didn't know what to expect. And mm -hmm. the first long trip I did, it was from uh, Montrose up to Boise, Idaho. And shit, it was just as comfortable as could be. Comfortable you know? it can be. Yeah. So that was a killer trip. And uh, so anyway, looking forward to more of those. Um, I am a little bit strapped because of being able to carry enough. Um, yeah. Like always, camping gear or whatever. Only so much space. Yeah. You know, if I'm motel in it yeah i can put my toothbrush in there and i'm ready to go so, <laughs> ready to go it's all you go need, like old man. school right right need a new t-shirt go to walmart and get another t-shirt <laughs> right but, just um uh, anyway cool man yeah well obviously thanks for having me out um if anybody's got any questions for you wants to reach out with questions about the bike or anything what's the best way for them to do that yeah instagram um fxr hans 89 um yeah just um enjoy to talk or if you see me out riding you know come by and say hey you know yep. um and that's been another uh, cool thing you know getting to out in the middle of nowhere somebody will walk up to you and go is that the fxr that ramjet build i mean yes yeah. it is I, how do you know we're out here in the middle of nowhere and he goes i've been following that thing from I day mean, one you know a young kid 17 yeah. years old I, I just i was shocked it's nice but that it's nice as this thing is. Uh, people are going to notice it, and they're going to like, yeah, hundred percent, yeah. You know, and again, the the inspiration. You know, so if somebody followed that build and you know gets inspired to just get out and ride, and that's that's what we're here for to do and and enjoy. So I'd like to, you know, for, for foremost, um, give a big thank you to Tony and Ross who spend on, I don't know how many hours he spend on the build um and everybody here at ramjet um i'm honored to call them my my friends now and and that relationship has grown over this build and uh yeah totally indebted to tony and what they've done with this it's more than i ever imagined um yes we did go a little bit overboard on some of the things but you know as it turned out um super happy and and uh again thank you thanks for tuning in um i'll drop hans and ramjet all their information below you check out um if you got any questions reach out check out my site for merch hats shirts whatever i'll drop a parts list parts list in um bye thank you for watching <laughs> <laughs>